Hey guys, Skinboy38 on here once again, and I've got something really special here today. Uh, I'm going to introduce this video by showing off that I have expanded my video collection. Uh, here I've got a Razor Tarantula, but it's got the Voodoo badge on the bottom. Very cool, it glows red, and the side keys glow red instead of blue. I've also got a Voodoo uh, Death Adder. Uh, if I click somehow it lights up even though the computer's not on, whatever. But yeah, this is a, I guess, okay-ish rubber dome keyboard, keyboard from the time. Uh, it's by no means great today. I mean, it's passable if you want to type on it, but for gaming, you probably want something with a little bit more responsiveness. I'm going to wind this back up here and show you what I currently use. Nowadays, I use a Razer uh, Black Widow Chroma. It's not too bad. It's got the Razer green switches, which are the, which are the what, Cherry MX Blue knockoffs. Pretty good, pretty clicky. Not too much uh, force to press down. But yeah, uh, other keyboards I've no that I've tried, I've tried some Cooler Master Storms that are uh, both Cherry MX Blues and uh, MX Greens. I like the greens a lot, but one of the keys broke, so I, I ended up selling it for less than it's worth, but whatever, who cares. And I've also tried some Logitech Roamer G switches. I don't think they're for me. I didn't like them too much. But now I'm starting to get back into the vintage computing game and thought, hey, we might as well go big. Go big or go home, am I right? I bought the Razer, not Razer, what am I talking about? The Voodoo Omen case uh, for, what was that, 1500 might say that's a lot for a case, but it's for a really cool brand that I like. So, yeah, and they're very hard to find and very well made. Very glad I did make that tr that purchase. But now we have another another big thing here. We have a massive box here. It almost doesn't even fit. It's almost touching the light above me here. And I'm going to be using a Pentium 4 as my cutting knife today. Because why not? Despite it being so much newer than the thing I'm unboxing, uh, it's still pretty, pretty worthless. I'm going to try to use it as a cutting knife, but I do actually have a razor blade if this fails. I'm going to try this way. I can actually see what I'm cutting. Maybe that'll help. As I it did help. Who would have thought? This box is pretty worn, but oh well. I specifically asked this to be uh, double boxed. There we go, that's one side. And it does seem to be pretty well packaged. There we go. Pentium 4 did okay. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use different processors for each unboxing video I do in the future. That shows a lot of newspaper, a lot of packing. Wow, is this thing big. Even some, like, streamer thing? Look at this. <laughs> Why? That's just going to be lost and be annoying. So it's not quite double boxed. But, oh man, that hit me. It's not quite double boxed, but it is still a really good packing job here. Toss that away, and we get to the meat of the video. <laughs> we, have, we have more streamers. Is this to celebrate the fact that I won the auction? I'm sure other people may find this video who are actually bidding against me, but. Yeah, I guess I won the auction. A big rectangle. 
NTM4 comes up. Fear or knife. Yeah, who would have thought that LGA socket uh, across the first snakes for good knives? You wouldn't use one to defend yourself with, but you could certainly use one to threaten people. <laughs> Alright, the keen-eyed among you might already know what this is, but, yep, let's fully unbox it before showing and telling what it is, or I guess, whatever. English is hard. Never without interruptions. Let's continue taking off the backing here. I try to avoid touching the keys so that I can experience actually typing on them myself for the first time. A lot of... There's just dead film or some kind of debris. That can actually stay as it is. All this bubble wrap can go away from me, behind me someplace. And now, here we have it. This is a legendary IBM Beam Spring 5251 keyboard. Supposedly the best feeling keys on the planet. It's got some kind of debris on it. I don't know what it's got on it. Some very hard, thin material. Seems to be coming from inside the keyboard almost. Is that the dead foam? I need to replace all the foam bits? Probably. Let's be honest, that's likely what it is. What is this? An extra baggie of something. So yeah, I've been wanting one of these keyboards, just any IBM Beam Spring, for years. Alright, so this is some a cable clamp that is used to clamp down on the cable and hold it in place. Uh, that might be what's used to hold it in place uh, on its terminal. I'm going to take a look and see. Is, is this a rubber foot from the bottom? I need to make sure I don't forget about Yeah, there's it's from this corner here. Label it's covered with something. Don't know what. I'm gonna give it a good shake. Hopefully try to get some of this debris out of here. Wipe it clean here. And yes, I was just holding an IBM beam show with one hand. But now comes the moment of truth. I'm going to try to uh, type a pretend sentence. I don't have the computer on. It's, of course, not got a USB connection yet. But that does bring me to my next package I have here. I'm going to need to use a Pentium 4 for this. This is a controller board, a new controller board for the solenoid. Uh, made by a dude named X Watson. I, uh, he didn't have any more of, a, of his main controller boards, his converter boards. I, he did have the solenoid uh, thing intact, or in stock. And I'm just going to hold on to it until I can get this thing converted to USB. Because I really hope to restore this thing to some degree. And, well, see how it does, but... Oh, wow. Okay, I am going to go ahead and just stick on the rubber foot. Where is it? Over here. Just stick the rubber foot on, even though... Where is it? Here? No. Here it's supposed to be. Stick on the rubber foot just so that it stays a little bit more balanced. And here we go. First time typing. Ooh. That does feel really nice. I'll give it that. That does feel really nice. Oh, wow. Like, 
it's not mind blowing. I will give it that. It's not mind blowing, but it's certainly no pushover. I do need to get used to the layout. And no proper arrow keys anywhere on the keyboard except for here for left and right. Can you even see that? I hope you can. Way over here, there's the arrow keys. But yeah, this, this is something. Did I even hit the apostrophe there? I think I did. But yeah, wow. For me, this has been a very long time coming. I've been trying to find a deal on one of these keyboards for years, literally since 2017, as soon as I knew uh, their reputation for being even better than Model M's, even better than buckling springs, even better than Model F's and their buckling capacitive springs. I think this does take the cake. Now, to be fair, I have not tried a Model M or Model F in some time, so maybe I'm skewed towards this at the moment, so maybe take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, listen to that. I could probably, the switches could probably use some lube. Uh, it's a safe way to take one of these keys off without trying to kill it. Probably with a normal key uh, remover, which I don't have near me, so big F. But yeah. Uh, if you can restore one of these and have it in good condition, they can go for over $2,000. I saw a different model, a 3278 model, which has a proper uh, numpad, a proper set of arrow keys, just in a cluster of four. And then the cluster over here. I think that's a way better layout than the non-separation here. Like, I'm used to separation. If you look at uh, the Razer keyboard here, hopefully you can see that there's a good separation between this enter key and the numpad. Here, there's the enter key and then the numpad. Maybe I could get used to it. Maybe not. Who knows? But yeah, this keyboard really has been a long time coming. So glad I won the auction for this. If you're wondering how much it was, it wasn't cheap. It was well over $500. But with the amount of profit you can make on these things nowadays, it's probably still a solid investment. Yeah, I wish I could get everything uh, in right now and plug it right up to the computer, calibrate it, and type on it with the solenoid. That's what I want to do so bad. Type on the solenoid. But... You can only do so much right now. I'm looking at some of the legends on the keys and we have the normal layout almost here. We've got Matilda, one with, is that an exclamation? Maybe an, ex an exclamation, that's the same. Two is that, that's the same. Three and four, pound sign and dollar sign, that's the same. Five is percent, but six has like a Weird legend on it. Maybe I'll get a close-up of this. Alright, I'm getting a feel now of some of the keys. If you look, there's quite a bit of key wobble. Now I'm not sure if cleaning the keys will help with that. Alright, so one of the keys for sure needs to be cleaned. The O key is not giving a click. It seems like all the other keys are good. Oh, 
Feel the cues. Definitely binding. And if you press up on it and press it, it like scratches against the casing. Same for the insert delete key. That may have been used a lot. All right, so print screen and O don't have a click. Overall, this should be a fun project. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over now and take a look at what kind of screws we need to deal with. Looks like just four or five flathead screws and we will have ourselves inside the IBM beam spring. That will be for another day though. Right now, I got one. <laughs> Thanks, Game Way Out. I will see you guys in the future.